Hello, everyone. I welcome you here again. So today we have Miss Nikita Tuli with us. So welcome, Nikita. Hi, Puni. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, Nikita is currently a research scholar in the area of marketing from MDI Gurgaon. So we want to start with your academic journey first. Please tell us. Uh, so my I did my 10th and 12th from Mount Carmel School. It's a convent school. Uh, which really helped me in, uh, you know, for polishing my com English communication skills. And hence, now I've been using these skills here professionally and in writing my research papers. Then I did my graduation and post-graduation from University of Delhi. And following that, I cleared my NET, I cleared my GRE. And then I got admitted to MDI uh, as a PhD scholar in back in 2020. Okay, okay. So currently, uh, you have, you know, you're on the, you know, step of data collection. So do you want to share something? How to how to find a research topic? Because a lot of scholars are, you know, struggling to find the gap, the research gap. So do you want to share something, your experience? Yes. So first of all, there is a myth that choosing a new topic or a challenging topic is really not worth during your PhD. My comment is that it is worth because your entire PhD journey is all about exploration. Okay. So there are certain subjects in our coursework as well that requires you to explore yourself as a research scholar. The institute gives you a chance to uh, explore different topics of your interest. And plus, choosing a topic your, of your interest has a pro that you have to spend four years of your life or three years of your life with this topic. Yes. Right. So it's all about dating someone or choosing a girlfriend or a boyfriend who, do, who you do not even like. <laughs> right. So it's like choosing a partner that you are interested in them, that you like them, mm -hmm. that makes the relationship bearable and that makes the relationship sustainable. Mm -hmm. So that ways. And the more challenging the topic is, uh, uh, to be very honest, the more rewarding it is and the more your contribution is. So right now what the journals and publication outlets, if you see, they are looking for such challenging topics. At least journals that are listed higher in ABDC categories or other categories, they actually, the special issues that you explore, they come up with these new topics, for example, metaverse or well-being or inclusivity, because these are much less explored topic, especially in India. Right. So, for example, my topic is LGBTQ inclusivity. Now, when I started, it was very, very challenging, very challenging. And people told me that is going to be challenging. Will you be able to do it? But then I thought, no, Karna, I want to do it. So I started from somewhere and at this stage, by God's grace, my PhD topic is on LGBTQ inclusivity. My TAC is my thesis advisory committee supporting me throughout my journey. And it is my TAC who complimented me by saying that it is because of you that we have become sensitive to the LGBTQ community. We were totally indifferent. We were totally unaware that such things exist. Even if we knew, we did not care. But after working on this topic or seeing you work on this topic, you have actually sensitized us. And getting this compliment from my faculty has been a very, very big compliment for me. So challenging topics, yes, definitely go for it. And please, please choose a topic of your interest. Don't let anyone sway you in any other direction because there are going to be many people who will come to you. No, no, yeah, this is not in demand or don't take this. It's going to be very challenging. Take it. Try it. You can change the topic afterwards. In fact, 90% of the time, the topic that you decide during your admission changes. Mm -hmm. So that happens. So whatever interests you, choti se choti cheez, badi se badi cheez, even if it's not related to your area, management is an interdisciplinary area. So everyone knows that a marketing scholar can explore topics that originated in the finance area or HROB area or operations area. And somehow I linked it to marketing. It's a social topic. It's a social, sociological, uh, psychological topic that I'm working on. But I found a link with marketing and, and a very significant research gap thereof. thereof. So I think, yes, uh, for me, it's the interest and it's the challenge. Okay. That's wonderfully explained. A lot of scholars, you know, once they do your, their research work, they want to, you know, publish their research work you know, through their research article, you know, maybe case study. So how to identify particular genre? Do you want to share something about it? Yes. So I'll tell you how I identify it. So when I write a paper, we cite some work, previous work. 
right? We reference that. So just go to your reference list and see which journal is the most prominent in, in that list. Because it high, it's highly likely that your topic actually falls within the scope of those journals. That's why the maximum number of work that you have cited is from that journal. Okay. Right? Okay. And one approach, it's a little, I know it's very ambitious of me to say this. So I don't take a bottom up approach. I take a top down approach. It means I'll start with an A star journal. I'll send my paper in that journal first. Mm -hmm. So what happens with these top notch journals, A star and A journals, even if they reject your paper, they give you a very productive review as to how you can enhance your paper. So I take those reviews from an A star or an A category journal. I enhance my paper and then I send it to another journal that matches the scope. So in your reference list, you're going to find, find four to five potential journals that you can target. So I, I suggest you target all those four to five journals. Take, even if your paper gets rejected, it's okay. Take the reviews, incorporate them into your manuscript to enhance it. And then it's bound to go into review in any of the journals that you target. Okay. Even if it does not go into an A category, go for a B category. Even if it gets rejected in B category, there's a C category, right? But with every I trade, your chances of uh, review and uh, acceptance increases. Okay, very well said. So a lot of scholars think that, you know, targeting A or A star is tough or, you know, you know, they, they, they have some, you know, they don't want to try, maybe fear of rejection or something. So do you want to yes. share something or is, is it actually difficult or what do you think? Yes. Yes. So I'll not say it's not difficult. That would be very stupid of me to say it was very difficult. They fall into A star NA category for a reason, for their rigor. So uh, what happened was recently, I am getting all these reviews because of the importance of my topic, right? Especially in the context of India, where this is such a taboo. Being a homosexual, being a transgender person is such a taboo. So what I did was I become, became very ambitious and I sent my paper in an FT50 journal. And you won't believe what happened. I got a review. I got a review and I just submitted my first round of revisions. Arriba. And wonderful. Yes. And, and you won't believe the quality, the reviews were so productive, the quality of paper. I, I mean, I was comparing the older draft with my revised draft and this is it was, it was so different. It was so well written. It was so well formulated, well articulated. The theories that we had opted for the framework that we proposed very, very clear only because of the reviews that we received. That's wonderful. Right. And sometimes you never know. Uh, so the journal that I uh, submitted to, they do not, they do not publish qualitative research. I mean, historically they have not. Okay. But after seeing the paper, they told us that they are changing their policies and they want such qualitative publications in their journals. Okay. And then they gave me the review. So you never know uh, which ideology the editor is following or with which ideology the reviewer is sitting. So do take this risk. I mean, what is the worst that could happen? You could get rejected. It's okay. Rejection is not, it's not the end of uh -huh. your life. Right. 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 So take targeting, some risks. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So I understood uh, you are going through the qualitative approach. That is the approach you are, uh, you know, applying in your research. So uh, is it, uh, you know, which one is easier to target the regular issues or special issues? Is there any so, difference? Uh, Yes, I'm also doing an experiment. It's not like I'm only doing qualitative. So I'm also doing an experimental study of quantitative. Uh, so I think regular issue is easier to target because special issue is on your topic. So the editors and the reviewers will be selected based on their expertise on your topic. Mm -hmm. Right. So they are going to take and plus special issue has these very limited number of articles that will be published. Regular mm -hmm. issue do not. I mean, overall, entire, the entire year, they publish around 50 or 60 articles. So there's a chance if your article does not get accepted for this month's public, uh, issue, they might get accepted in a in next month's issue. So regular issue is, I think, much easier than a special issue, which is more focused and more critical of your work. But again, special issue again enhances your work. Okay. There's a, there's a trade-off. It's up to the uh, author to decide which way to go. Okay. Okay. Most of the scholars, you know, they uh, uh, go through the quantitative approach since you are, you know, very few researcher who is going through the qualitative. So do you want to share something, key? which particular analysis or which particular method or software a qualitative researcher uses? Yes. Okay. 
so uh, my topic actually necessitates a qualitative approach because the sample uh, is very very limited plus i opted for grounded theory and i have also opted for fuzzy d metal which is a mixed approach you collect data qualitatively and then you analyze it quantitatively so there are many software there the software as such atlas ti there is nvivo but from my personal experience i think manually it it is more productive so because in these softwares as well you have to enter the codes manually mm -hmm. right so i have to do double labor now mm -hmm. i have to enter the codes manually in nvivo it's better i do it manually in, in an excel or a word format so that what happens is the interviews they get transcribed here mm -hmm. i right. know i know by heart what each respondent said in each line because of my manual transcription mm -hmm. and we were at least yeah have their advantages for the representation purposes and everything they, they have they do have their advantages and some scholars prefer prefer it i prefer a manual transcription merely for the purpose of i don't know it's it's more comfortable it's more uh, enhancing as a researcher to me to know what my transcripts word by word says okay 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 very well said so thank you you know thank you for sharing your time and learning with all of us so is there anything else you want to share with all the viewers yes so one very important thing please go on vacations okay <laughs> sitting to our phd is all about sitting and spending time, time on research papers take some vacations make friends i have had the privilege of having friends and going on trips with them uh, we every week we have a rule we go for a movie Uh, our friends so actually it actually uh, you know eases your mind and it increases your productivity uh, not on the expense of your course work or your deadlines obviously those are the priorities but otherwise make sure you go on a lot of vacations please be consistent and please be patient i know it's easier said than done patience is not my strong suit as well so i have had experiences of papers going into reviews and taking 3 months and i get very impatient why aren't they sending the reviews what is happening where are the reviewers what are they doing but please be patient and this is what will help you sail through and please keep in touch with your friends and family you know do not leave your relationships behind these are the they are very important to help you you know balance your heart and mind in phd so this is what my personal experience has been Okay thank you so much Nikita for sharing your you know experience and time with all of us thank you so much thank you Puneet have a great day okay